In this demo, we're going to walk through how to report the APM performance pathway for a group within QPP. To start, we're going to log into the QPP platform. Using your HARP ID and your password, you can enter the information, and then from there, you need to attest to the statement of truth. Once you sign in, you'll land on the QPP homepage. From here, you can see that the reporting window is open and you have the ability to start reporting. If you're associated with multiple groups or multiple different entities within your uh, user, you will see different tabs that are associated at, on this page that outline either APM entities or practices. For the purpose of this demo, we're going to evaluate practices. On the practice page, you can see that each one of the groups has different types of special scenarios associated. Only groups that have APM participants are able to actually report the APP. For this, as we scroll down, you can see that we have information that is associated with APM entities, and you also can view the APM entity details as you go through. If I click on report as a group, the first place that I'm going to land is going to be on the reporting options. This gives you the ability to either navigate into the APP or report for traditional MIPS. It's important to notate that if you are reporting for your APM participants and you also have MIPS eligible participants that are not part of the APM, you would need to report to both traditional MIPS and the APP to ensure that there are no negative adjustments assigned to any of your participants that are not eligible to receive the APP score. From here, we would click on Start Reporting. We're going to be met with a prompt that says, by clicking Report APP, you are agreeing to be scored through the APP. So once I click on this button, you can see that we land on our Reporting Overview page. Since this is APP reporting, you can see that the weighting associated with each one of the categories is in line with what is expected. Quality at 50, promoting interoperability at 30, and improvement activities at 20. Since you are reporting through the APP, you are receiving full auto credit for improvement activities because you are reporting APP. From here, we're going to go ahead and upload a file with the associated measures for APP reporting. These measures are measure 001, measure 134, and 236. Any measures that are reported outside of there with the program name of APP1 will be rejected and the file will not be uploaded successfully. From here, you can see that the file that I upload was successful and I can now view my submission details. You can see that my quality score has been populated, as well as the fact that I have reported via the MIPS qu clinical measures, also known as CQMs. I can navigate into the quality page to view the details associated. From here, you can see the submitted measures that were part of my submission, which then again include measure 1, 134, and 236. Each one of these are sorted based off of the score associated with the measure itself. As we scroll down the page, we can see that there is some additional information associated with reporting. For groups that are larger than 15, they will also be eligible to receive the hospital-wide readmission measure if they have met the minimum threshold and also are responsible for registering and reporting the CAPS measure. Since this information will not be available until after the submission period closes, during the submission period, we're going to show you that these measures are applicable. They have a weight, but have a score of zero. So as we scroll down to the bottom to evaluate our quality score, you can see that the de denominator associated with the category is 50 because there are five required measures, the three reportable, in addition to the hospital-wide readmission and the CAPS measure. We have our category weight of 50 and then all of our points that are then assigned based off of our weight. Once we finish the submission period and have the data associated with these two measures, when you log in, you would be able to see both the performance rate and measure score that's associated with the measures if you 
have met either the threshold for the caps or the threshold for having the hospital-wide readmission measure applied to your group. From here, we have completed our quality reporting for the APP. If we go back to the group reporting overview page, we can now see that the quality has been completed and the next step would then be to report your promoting interoperability. You have the option to either create your PI score through an manual entry or upload a file via a QRDA3 or a QPP JSON file in alignment with the requirements of the promoting interoperability category. It's important to notate that each one of these submissions are by themselves and only exist underneath of the APP. If we go back to the reporting options page, if we go to the traditional MIPS and go to edit submission, we can see that the information that's been reported does not actually translate over into this area. Again, if you are looking to report for your participants that are not associated with the APP, you will need to go into the traditional MIPS category and complete reporting for all categories that you wish to report. If you do not report any information underneath of the traditional MIPS category, all participants that are associated with the group and not eligible for the APP score will receive a score of zero for the year. If you're looking to report for other groups or other practices within your user account, you can go back to the account home or switch practice and select any additional groups or entities that you wish to report for. This concludes the demo for APP reporting and how to report through the QPP platform.